Hi YouTube, welcome back to the Nordic Watch channel. I'm Anders from Finland and today finally a chance to revisit this Seiko 5 SNKL41 which I made an unboxing video of last year. In this video a more in-depth review of this watch and what it's been like owning it for a year and uh, just a new perspective about the watch and how good of a watch it is for your hundred euros or dollars that you still can get this watch for occasionally. Also a fun fact for you guys who are wondering what's with the coffee cup. Finland is one of the biggest coffee consumers per capita in the world. So as this is the Nordic Watch channel and I'm Anders from Finland, I figured it would be an appropriate prop here on the set. If you have anything to ask about Finland or anything else, be sure to drop it in the comment section below and uh, go check out my Instagram page I made for this channel, Nordic Watch channel. I post some photos of obtainable watches in everyday situations and try to make some real amateur photography with my iPhone. But yeah, let's get to the review of this watch. So this watch almost needs no introduction in the YouTube watch community as it has become a bit of a icon watch almost in the category of affordability and value for money, uh, which partially has granted it the nickname of the poor man's Sarb, which is why I'm wearing my Sarbo 33 on a Gekoda president bracelet today and we'll be making some comparisons between the two. And also uh, the Sarbo 3.3 and 3.5 are in their turn called the poor man's Grand Seiko. So you could look at it like uh, this actually is a poor man's Grand Seiko, maybe. So as this is a Seiko 5, uh, many of you probably already know this, but just for a quick repetition, that means that it's automatic it has a day and date function and it has a recessed crown at the four o'clock position. It's water resistant to some degree and it's somewhat durable. So those are some basic specifications of what you're getting for your around 100 euros or dollars. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to give you some basic specifications of the watch as well as its dimensions and what you're getting. After that, I'm going to go through negative things that I've noticed after one year of owning this watch, then moving on to the positive, and in the end, bring it all together and giving you my final opinion of this watch as a whole. And stay tuned to the very end of the video if you want to see how this watch sits on a variety of straps, like leather straps, NATO straps, or purlon straps. Okay, so dimensions, we have a diameter of 37 millimeters, a thickness of 10 millimeters, lug width of 18, and a lug to lug of around 42 millimeters. So this is a fairly compact watch and uh, could almost say it is a small watch and a unisex size. So as in my case, that was actually pretty nice because I could order it for myself and then uh, my girlfriend tried it and she really liked it and uh, it was a good fit for her wrist also which is not a lot smaller than mine so it was an easy easy decision to gift it to her so with those basic Seiko 5 specifications out of the way uh, you're getting a hardlex crystal which is uh, I think it's really okay and you're getting a really timeless and elegant dial with a white subtle sunburst and a day and date feature as mentioned. The watch comes on this uh, folded link bracelet which is mostly brushed and has these uh, polished ends of the center links there. Stamped Seiko 5 clasp really basic and uh, I'm not sure if it says Japan on the K version this is the J, J1 with the made in Japan on the dial but on this one the clasp says Seiko 5 Japan. Uh, in the unboxing video I gave the bracelet a lot of 
nagging and I have to say after using it and hearing what my girlfriend has to say about it apart from it being a bit of a rattler it's uh, it's not half bad actually it's not a hair puller and it's pretty solid so and it's actually finished quite okay the water resistance is 50 meters so if you dare you might go swimming with this I probably wouldn't but you can sure wash your hands and go out in the rain without a care in the world you're getting the very basic Seiko 7s26 movement no surprise there without hand, hand winding or hacking and around a 40 hour power reserve and 28,600 beats per hour so really the entry level entry level Seiko movement but it does come with a display case back not a lot of finishing on the movement as you might know but if this is your first automatic watch or one of your first then it's still a nice feature to have that see-through case back there so you can admire the movement working away in there and it's a gateway to this alluring world of watches so I think that's just just a nice nice touch there Okay, so what negatives do I have to say about this watch? Keeping in mind, keeping in mind that this is a hundred dollar or euro watch, so you can't have everything for that price. Uh, one of the things is the movement itself. It is an okay movement, but you can get something like an Invicta uh, Pro Diver with an NH35 movement for around a hundred euros or, or dollars so it's a shame that you can't get a Seiko with that kind of movement for the same price uh, I was going to say the bracelet but actually for the price I don't think it's half bad even though it's folded links but uh, it's still an okay effort for the price only thing about the bracelet that uh, bugged me in the unboxing that still kind of does is that weird weird gap between the bracelet and the end link there which sometimes jumps at you when you look at the watch and then of course one thing you can argue that is a downside is the hard legs crystal as you might scratch it and uh, it's not an easy fix as uh, something like acrylic crystal is easy and uh, then again sapphire doesn't scratch so well what about the positives about this watch then as you might be expecting there are quite a few things that are really good for the price with this watch <clears throat> But I think one of the most important things, especially if you're starting out as a watch collector or enthusiast or you're gifting a watch to somebody that isn't really, doesn't have a lot of watches, then I think versatility is one of the big things about a watch in a small watch collection, which is what this watch does have. It's a really simple, elegant and timeless dial with a neutral color like white with a slight sunburst so uh, it can go pretty casually on this bracelet here and then if you want to dress it up and wear it with a suit or something you can put a nice leather strap on it I can show you what that looks like I also have this cognac colored leather strap actually in the unboxing video I showed you what that looks like and the case does have a nice mix of uh, polishing and brushing which gives it a li little bit of a pop when it hits the light so that's always nice in a 
watch of this price category. And there's also some functionality in that uh, this does have some loom on the hands and some loom pips on the hour markers. So it's a pretty much a complete package. It's a little bit smaller than the Sarb 033, but uh, it definitely does have the same type of characteristics as the Sarb, and you can see that clearly. So both are really simple and elegant, which uh, I understand completely why people think that this is a great alternative to the Sarb 033. I actually bought this watch so that I would know if I would like the Sarbo 35 myself. So to sum it all up, I don't think you can go wrong with this when you're keeping in mind that you're just paying around 100 euros or 100 dollars for it and as it is so wanted in the watch enthusiast field or what you would call it, you're bound to get your money back if you decide to flip it or something. So if you just sell it onwards then you're gonna get pretty much 90% or 100% or even more of your money back because it, it's it's pretty hard to get a hold of this watch at the moment so if you can get a hold of it just uh, you can just make the order if you don't like it you can sell it sell it and uh, pretty much not lose any money on it so it's a risk risk free buy in my opinion and here it is on my uh, six and uh, six and a half inch wrist or so. I'm actually not sure what it's uh, what the correct measure is right at the moment, but it's actually sized sized up for my girlfriend, and uh, it's a little bit tight, but will still fit. And it's a really really nice fit in my opinion. You you do get used to a little bit of a smaller size. And as I, as I said earlier and how this went for me, if you don't end up wanting to keep the watch for yourself, I think this is one of the top candidates if you're buying a watch as a gift to your girlfriend or some significant other. So then you just bought yourself a, a present for this year's birthday or, or Christmas. So that's a free ticket out of jail right there. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up for this revisit of the Seiko 5S and KL41. All I, I can say is I think it's a really solid choice if you're looking for a watch in the $100 category. And uh, pretty much can't go wrong with it. If you do happen to go wrong, then you can just sell it and get another watch that better fits your preference. So. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, give this video a like. Follow my channel, the Nordic Watch channel. Also leave a comment down below. Do you think there are some other alternatives that you should consider instead of this Seiko? And uh, yeah, go check out my Instagram page, Nordic Watch channel. I just made that today and will be starting to post pictures there somewhat regularly. So. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about the new branding for this channel and uh, if you have any ideas on what I might have as a logo or something, you can comment that as well. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. And here's a shot of how this wears on a black Hirsch leather strap with white stitching and I think that's just a spot on strap for this watch and a good example on how you can dress it up if you want to wear it with a suit or a, or a jacket or something and I'll show you it on the wrist also and that's how it wears on the wrist and uh, yeah I really like this combination myself uh, the white dial really pops on a black leather strap especially with the white stitching and here's just an example if you really want to dress it down I think you can pull it off on a NATO strap like this black one here just fine not really my taste but uh, sure why not
Here's another example, uh, black and white seat belt, NATO strap, uh, not really a NATO strap of my taste, just happened to have it. In case somebody's wondering, that's one alternative, maybe. Or if you want to go for more of a summer look, then here it is on a grey purlon strap. I think it's actually 20 millimeters, but as you might know with purlon straps, you can pretty much put put them on anyway because they're somewhat flexible. So if you're wondering what it looks like on a purlon strap, there you go.